In the next five minutes or less, I'm gonna cover React hooks with you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what hooks are, why they're useful, and then we're gonna be taking a look at two quick examples. So first things first, what are hooks? Well, the simple answer is hooks are a mechanism that we can use in a React functional component to actually have access to things like state and the lifecycle of the component. Now that in itself, just the definition of the React hook isn't really all that exciting. I think what gets a lot more interesting is once we talk about what hooks are actually aiming to solve. So here's the problem. We all know that React class components can be a real pain in the neck. One of the biggest issues that we actually have to deal with as React developers when we're writing class-based components is we have to deal with the infamous this keyword in JavaScript. And we all know how that turns out. So while we, of course, would like to be able to write React functional components, we're, of course, very limited in the fact that the class components have the lifecycle methods, they have access to state, but the functional components are rather dumb. All they can do is accept props and return JSX. Well, that was, of course, before we had hooks. Now that we have hooks, one of the very cool things that hooks actually offers us is the fact that now in a functional component, we can actually have access to state and the React lifecycle. Another great benefit that we get from using hooks is the fact that now, with hooks, it's a lot easier for us to actually share logic between our components. Previously, the way that we'd have to actually achieve this was to either use something like a render prop or a higher order component, both of which work really fine and are great patterns, but are slightly more complicated and can get rather messy. With hooks, this becomes a lot, a lot simpler. So right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you two quick examples of how we actually use hooks. So let's take a look. Okay, so on screen right now, we actually have the first of the two very simple examples that I'm gonna be showing you using hooks. And of course, this is a code sandbox to link to what you can find down in the description box below. So here's a very simple example. What we're going to do is we're going to have a functional component and the functional component is going to have a button and every single time you click on that button, it goes ahead and increments the number. Let me show you how we do this now using hooks. We're going to be importing use state. So this is going to be a built-in hook that's kind of already provided to us by React. We can of course go and create our own custom hooks, which we'll see in a second. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to be using one of the actual built-in hooks that are provided to us by React. And this one here is called use state. So here's what happens. Inside of our component, you can see we have a simple app component and then inside of components on the first line, what we're doing is we're going to actually go ahead and use this use state hook. We're going to initialize the initial value of state to zero. And then we actually are going to be getting these two variables. So the first variable is called counter, in which case this is going to be our actual state. And then we have the corresponding updater function, which we're going to be calling set counter. So effectively, if you want to update the value of counter, you're going to be using the set counter function to do so. And then the rest of it is all rather simple React stuff that you're already very familiar with. Here we have a simple H1 that's going to go ahead and render whatever the value of counter is, which at the moment is three. If I refresh this browser, you'll see that's going to be initialized to zero as it is specified right here. And then we have a button, which every single time that we're going to go ahead and click on this button, we're going to be calling the set counter uh, function that was given to us by use state. And then all we're going to do is we're going to be incrementing the value of number by one. Okay, so for the next example, we're going to be taking a look at something slightly more interesting. What I wanted to do is I wanted to have hover logic. Essentially, if I hover over hello sandbox, I want to now say the words, hey, get off me. But if I stop hovering, it just goes back to hello sandbox. But now instead of me just writing the logic to make this happen directly inside of my app component, I wanted to create a reusable utility, if you will, which anybody else who wants to work within my app can simply go ahead and use this utility, which is actually just going to be a custom hook that I myself have created. They can use this and now have access to the same logic and do with it whatever they want to for their specific use case. So here's how I'm doing this. First things first, I've got this hook called use hover. And then what it does is it gives me two things. One is a ref. And the other thing is a Boolean called is hovering, which is essentially just going to tell me whether or not we are in fact hovering over whatever it is that we've attached our ref to. I will then have this text variable that's going to essentially just be either hey get off me or hello code sandbox depending on whether or not is hovering is set to true or false and then what happens is this hover ref that was given back to me by the use hover hook i'm going to go ahead and attach it to my h1 so essentially the h1 is now the element that's going to have the ability to be listening out for whether or not it's being hovered on or not so as you can see i've got this hook called use hover which has been defined right up over here let's see how this works so once again we have our good friend use state and as you can see i'm defining two different variables one of them is going to be is hovering which is again just a boolean of whether or not we are in fact hovering or not and then it's corresponding updater function called set hover. Here you can see I'm creating a ref by using the use ref hook. So that's another one of the built-in hooks that we have in React. And then here you can see I'm using use effect, which is once again, another built-in hook that I've got from React. And I've actually got a whole video covering just use effect in and of itself. But suffice it to say that for the purposes of how I'm using it right now, you can think of it sort of like a component did mount. And that is just because of the way that I'm using it right now. So at this point now, this node represents the node that you've actually taken my ref that I've given you. And you've now attached it to some element. That element is now 
represented by this node variable right over here. So here you can see I'm doing a simple if check if node, making sure that node that the ref is no longer null, because of course here you can see I'm initializing it to null. So I just want to make sure that it's no longer null. If it's no longer null, we come into the if check and here I'm doing something very simple. I'm essentially just going to be attaching an event listener to the actual node. So I've got one event listener that says mouse over, which is going to call the handle mouse over function that I've defined right over here. And then here I've got a mouse out, which is going to call the handle mouse leave function. So mouse over is when you're actually hovering something. Mouse out is when you're actually moving the mouse away. So you're no longer hovering something. And then all I'm doing is when you're mousing over, I'm going to say set hover is equal to true. When you're leaving, I'm going to say set hover is equal to false. And that's literally all it is. Finally, down at the bottom, I then go and return these variables to you. I give you the ref and then I give you the is hovering. And all you need to do now is take this ref and attach it to whatever element you want to have hover logic on. And then I'm going to give you the actual Boolean of whether or not that item is in fact getting hovered. Well, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.